This episode of the Creep Street Podcast is brought to you by Martini Coffee Roasters. You know, people always look at me weird when I say I start off every morning with a big old martini. But then I set them straight and I tell them I'm talking about Martini Coffee Roasters coffee. A delicious coffee made by the Martini family. They roast their coffee using a traditional method of sight and sound to roast those little babies to perfection. And they also sell green coffee beans for those home roasters out there. And right now, fans of the Creep Street podcast can get 20% off their entire order by using the code CREEPSTREET at martinicoffee.com. Once again, for 20% off your order, use the code CREEPSTREET at martinicoffee.com. Martini Coffee Roasters, the perfect coffee to keep you creeps caffeinated. You've taken a wrong turn. Down Creep Street. Citizens of the Milky Way, this is Maureen Bogey. And this is Dylan Hackworth. And you are listening to the Creep Street podcast oh yeah wow thank you all for joining us today and for being a part of the creep street homeowners association oh yeah if you want to be kept up excuse me crept up (laughs) on all of our news and what we've got going on feel free to follow us on our social media pages okay on instagram and facebook we are at creep street podcast oh yeah twitter at creep street pod we technically have a tiktok we know how how to use it okay it's just you gotta prioritize your life absolutely you understand okay? absolutely and tiktok's coming up you know what i mean That's it's right. the next it's the next one now anywho we also have a smaller group within our facebook group called citizens of the milky way oh yeah. highly suggest you check that out now if one episode a week is not enough for you and it's not it's, it's not. just not so just f-ing stop trying to pretend like it is because you're pissing you're lying off. to yourself you're lying to everyone around you seriously so just head on over to patreon.com slash creep street podcast we have some really really fun bonus content on there we have three different tiers oh yeah so you can find the right level for you that matches what you're looking for and the price you are looking for as well no matter what tier you are on you are going to get at least one audio bonus piece of content a month at least oh at least and it just goes up and up from there yes we really love our patreon donors we really really love our top tier and we're going to hear those blessed names at the end of the program that's right that's right saving the best for last so last week we had a little bit of fun maybe we had a little too much fun maybe we had a little double trouble last week with our doppelgangers episode thank you so much for the love with that episode we loved making it and we're so happy you all enjoyed it that's right but this week we've got a different kind of situation really just this is weird it's weird it's unsettling yes ladies and gentlemen today's episode is night of the toxic woman Right, and real quick, let me give you my sources. Please. First, The Baffling Death of Gloria Ramirez by William DeLong at All That's Interesting. The Mysterious Case of the Toxic Lady by Brent Swanser at Mysterious Universe. The Mysterious Case of Mass Sociogenic Illness by Shazia Absar at varsity.co.uk. And A Case of Mass Hysteria by Louisa Dillner at theguardian.com. There you have it, folks. Ooh, wow, this is a weird one. So I can tell already just by those headlines, as it were, that this is going to be some weird shit. Weird shit. This is freaky stuff. Some mysterious kind of science action oh yeah going on absolutely we're talking full-on mitochondria right full-on other parts of a cell bit of you know bit of body horror yeah we're gonna dive into it well today's episode is one that's kind of hard to define because it really doesn't fit nicely into a box so this is sort of true crime was this just an unfortunate accident Mm -hmm. was this some kind of cover-up who knows it's weird it's all of it at once and obviously no matter what at the end of the day the story is about a young woman who tragically died at a young age she was 31 so at the end of the day let's just remember this was a real person and it's super sad you know you feel so sad for her and her her family but but this is also about one of the most bizarre medical mysteries in american history 
That was a fantastic rhyme. The center of our story is a 31-year-old woman named Gloria Ramirez. Gloria was a housewife living in the Southern California town of Riverside with her husband. And by all accounts, Gloria was nothing short of just a ray of sunshine. Mm. Her local pastor, a Reverend Brian Taylor, referred to her as, quote, a friend to everyone she met and a joker who brought joy to others. Now, unfortunately, Gloria, six weeks before her passing, had been diagnosed with cervical cancer, which apparently was already in a late stage. Oh, fuck. She had been undergoing chemotherapy and other uh, regular treatments. Yet despite even that, the source says that she never let her light dim. Let's just remember that up top, that yes, this was apparently yes. a very sweet lady uh, who a fighter. was gone too soon. But our story begins on the evening of February 19th, 1994. Suddenly, Gloria's health took just a sudden and drastic decline. All of a sudden, Gloria's blood pressure just plummeted. Oh, weird. She got really dizzy. She struggled to breathe. And her family, they're trying to comfort her. And then not long after, she begins to vomit profusely. Oh, God. So the family got her into the car, and they rushed her over to the general hospital there in Riverside. It was about 8.15 p.m. when they arrived at the emergency room. And according to the source, even as Gloria arrived, she was already in an incoherent state. Oh my God. This is so frightening already. Just like yeah. this quick turn. Absolutely. From, you know, of course she wasn't healthy at right. the beginning of the day or whatever, but she wasn't like this. Exactly. I mean, this is fucking crazy. They checked her vitals and they found out her heartbeat was racing like way too fast. With low blood pressure With too. low blood pressure too. Interesting. Maybe that's a thing. I Maybe that's a thing. Yeah, I don't know. But they realized she was in the middle of a heart attack. Oh my God. They immediately put her on oxygen and, and some sort of a, like a drug treatment, but it wasn't helping her. They began to remove her upper body clothes so that they could administer uh, defibrillation. Mm-hmm. The paddles. But, with the paddles, yes. But as they're prepping Gloria for this procedure, the nurses and doctors begin to notice some strange things. On her skin was this strange oily substance that sort of had like a sheen to it. Hmm, gross. And in the air, they started to notice an odd smell. They described it as almost smelling like fruity, like a fruity smell with a hint of garlic. Okay, huh. And some even said they could detect a faint smell of ammonia. Ew, what the fuck? They had no explanation for it, and they weren't for sure, but they thought that the smell might be coming from Gloria's mouth. <gasps> oh, right. Good they are looking Lord. around and they can't quite tell where this is coming from because it's not heavy. It's kind right. of faint, but it's bizarre. Oh, I don't like that. Well, they decided they should draw blood from Gloria to see if they could get any answers that way, but it only brought up more questions. According to the source, the moment the needle pierced her skin, the smell of ammonia grew much stronger almost like it had released fumes from oh, her body. Oh, oh God. Not only that, the sample they drew was bizarre as well. It looked as though there were particles floating in her blood. They described them as like floating white crystals. Everyone in the room is looking at this blood sample and they're, you know, dumbfounded by it. Yeah, that's Freaky. not great. Yeah, all this time though, that smell of ammonia just kept getting worse and worse. And then just then, one of the nurses on duty named Susan Kane passed out on the floor. Boom. Oh my God. She starts to come to and she's laying there in a daze saying that she has this burning feeling on her face. So they help her up and they place her in a wheelchair and they escort her from the room to go get looked at herself. So as they're taking care of Susan, another one of them began to fall ill. Her name was Julie Gorshinsky. She was a medical student who was on staff that night. She had begun to feel lightheaded shortly after Susan passed out. She excused herself and she sat down at a nearby desk to, to catch her breath. Moments later, another nurse was going up to her just to check in on her and see if she was okay. But before she could ask, Julie passed out onto <gasps> her desk and hit the floor. Bang. Oh my God. She comes to and apparently she's having trouble breathing. Uh, her breathing would momentarily stop and then start again. The source described it as a sort of apnea. I was almost. gonna say that sounds like sleep apnea, but yeah, she but wasn't she's asleep. awake, right. She would also convulse from time to time. Either way, there had now been two hospital staff pass out back to back wow. after their encounter with Gloria. Oof. What so the weird, hell? Right? Weird. It kind of reminds me of Chernobyl, you know, where it's like, yeah, uh, I mean, right. very 
different, but just like the idea with the doctors and the nurses, like exactly. not knowing what they're getting themselves into and then not knowing what is contaminated and what right. isn't contaminated and how contagious, for lack of a better word, it is right. and stuff. It's like, oh my God. Exactly. Very like big time stressful. Like I would call it like really stressful, honestly. Horrifying. Well, moments later, the respiratory specialist on staff that night, her name was Maureen Welch. Hello. I never hear my own name, and it's always shocking. Yeah. All the time. Well, not long after Julie passed out, Maureen fell ill as well and passed out. When she awoke, she was unable to move her limbs. Oh, wow. Now it's like, is this some like nervous system yeah, shit? Yeah, that's or weird. It's like, like it's something attacking <gasps> almost like a nerve gas. It's like anthrax or something. You're right. It's like it's attacking their nervous system. Oh, I don't like that. And also you said that she's the respiratory doctor? She was the respiratory specialist. I mean, she's the last one you need to be getting right. going down for the count right now. Right. You need this. Lady. We need Dr. Mo. Soon after, other staff began to report feeling unwell. Lightheadedness, uh, a, a sort of burning sensation, nausea, trouble breathing, as well as some of them had spasms. Oh, weird. The lead doctor on staff that night was a Dr. Umberto Ochoa, and he made the call to evacuate the hospital, including all the patients except for Gloria and a small team that would stay behind to work on her. Oh my gosh, that is the premise of a horror movie yeah. that I really enjoy. Staff and patients alike were treated out in the parking lot. A select few stayed and did all they could to save Gloria, but her condition kept getting worse. And roughly 35 minutes after evacuating, Gloria Ramirez passed away. Oh, no. They tried to defib and use CPR for like 45 minutes. Oh, but, gosh. But they were not, not able to save her. And oh. uh, unfortunately, she passed away. Now, they've also got to worry about why everyone around them is suddenly getting sick. Right. They had no idea what the hell was going on. But as for folks at the hospital, this bizarre night was just getting started. No. A special biohazard unit had to be called in to remove Gloria's body from the premises. I mean, this is crazy. Like, Absolutely what, what crazy. What happened? complete biohazard unit with, you know, fully dressed in hazmat suits, all that. Gloria's body was placed in a sealed aluminum casket. There was a total of 37 medical emergency staff on duty that night, and in all, 23 people fell ill, wow. five of them serious enough that they had to be hospitalized. <gasps> in fact, that medical student, Julie, who passed out at the desk, she was hospitalized for two weeks in the intensive care unit following that night. Oh my, God. that's a, that's substantial. That's it's, it's wild. Wow. So this isn't just like some people being like, hey, I don't feel great. Right. You know, someone smelled a little funky and it right. made my goddamn guts hurt. Exactly. No, this is crazy Absolutely. shit. Absolutely. Now, naturally, too, as word got out about this, this strange thing, it became a media sensation. Oh, yeah. And that was when the media that actually dubbed Gloria the toxic lady. Mm -hmm. Now, the first autopsy was carried out six days after her passing. But during that stretch of time before then, the media had kind of run wild with the story. Many of the hospital staff were interviewed and all of them thoroughly believed that it was some sort of a toxic reaction they had had when they were in close quarters with Gloria. Right, right. And as you would expect from this first autopsy, tons of precautions were taken. They fastened a room to be like airtight. Right, uh, right. The staff, they had the full hazmat suits. The whole nine yards. The whole nine yards. Strangely enough though, the autopsy yielded no results that would end indicate some kind of toxin or whatever that would elicit these reactions that the hospital staff had experienced. I mean, I wonder if the autopsy taking place six days later would have anything to do with that? And we'll talk about that. You're getting on to some good points here. Oh, oh my God. Thank you so much. They even took an air sample from the inside of the aluminum casket, and that gave them nothing. Oh my God, that's, what is going on? I know, right? And it's not just like one person, it, then how did all these other people how, get How exactly, sick? it's not just like this one off anomaly. Right. I mean, something serious was going on. Well, Gloria's family is obviously outraged that they can't get a clear answer as to what the fuck happened to Gloria. Right, because even though she had terminal cancer, it sounds like. Right. That doesn't mean that her family's gonna be just okay with her dying. Right. 
I mean, it seems like she died from something that had nothing to do with her cancer. I mean, or or maybe it did have something to do with her cancer, but they should know what that right. was because I don't know if, you know, cancer doesn't make you right. a, like a nuclear goddamn hazard. Right. That I was, know she, it wasn't nuclear, but you, know, right. you get it. Obviously, like, if these fumes were not coming from Gloria, then maybe it was something coming from the hospital. Like something that wasn't stored properly, right. and stuff like that. In fact, that specific hospital had been cited for violations <gasps> in the past. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Now we're getting on to we're the cover-up get- angle, and it gets more it gets more shady as we go on. Okay. Not saying that's what happened, but it does get a little fucking fishy the farther it. we go. I think it's worth talking about, chatting about. But a thorough investigation of the hospital was done to look for you know any toxic materials or biohazardous materials that hadn't been properly stored, and they found nothing. So let's think about this. They find nothing in the autopsy that would indicate anything was off. Likewise, there was nothing in the hospital that was found to be responsible. So why did five, 23 people get sick and five people have to be hospitalized? Right, right. In, in fact, Julie, the medical student, was in the hospital for two fucking weeks. Like, that's serious. That's, I mean, that's serious. That's not just, you don't just get sick like that. Exactly. Well, obviously, the press is talking about this. The family's push because the family's like, well, if it didn't come from Gloria, no how one would get this, sick like that. Yeah, like, how did this happen? Maybe if something was not stored well or something in the hospital, that could be why Gloria died. She so, could have like, come and contacted it to it and, you know, who the fuck, I mean, fuck knows how many ways she could have. Exactly. Well, the Riverside coroner's office, they started to feel the heat. They were coming under pressure to conduct a second and more thorough autopsy, which, what do you mean more thorough? Why didn't you make it fucking thorough Why the didn't first you time? do it the right... right. You had hazmat me. suits, dick bags. What the fuck are you... How are you going to get more thorough than that, for Christ's yeah, sake? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, I know a lot of fucking places do this where they're like, well, we're saving money. We can't just do the full shit all the time, blah, blah. And it's like, this is the time. This is the time that yeah. you do it because now you have to you actually have to do it twice now. Absolutely. So that's a waste of time and a waste of money. Just do it right the first time. Do a full ass autopsy. Something weird is occurring. Well, the second autopsy was performed on March 25th, 1994 at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. And so this is now six weeks after she passed. Hmm. The results that would come back would only make this story more strange. From this examination, they were able to determine that in her system were substances such as Tylenol, uh, lidocaine, and codeine, which, you know, commonly used for pain. Right. Another one, I think it's T-I-G-A-N. Is that Tegan or Tigan or something? Tegan, I guess it's taken for nausea. And according to my source, how this, how Tegan or Tigan, sorry if I'm saying it wrong, how it works is that when it's in the body, it breaks down into what are called amines or amines, A-M-I. I-N-E-S. And I guess these amens or whatevers are apparently part of the ammonia family. Mm, so that okay. could maybe explain that ammonia smell in the air. Okay, interesting. So these things, like I said, these make sense. Tylenol, codeine, you know, she was on pain meds, obviously. Right, She's right. got cancer. She's going to be taking these things. That makes sense. But the autopsy turned up something very strange as well. They found in Gloria's system a large amount of dimethyl sulfone in her blood and in her tissues. So what is dimethyl sulfone? Yeah, what is that? It's apparently something that the body produces naturally to help break down certain substances in the body. But apparently it is normally in and out of the body within three days. Now, Gloria had already been passed away for six weeks. What? Yet even then, her body contained three times the normal amount of dimethyl sulfone. What the fuck? Okay, so that's... Why didn't they get that shit the first time? How did they miss that? And also, that seems like a huge right. situation, in my opinion, that it, it's still in her system and to that level. Right. So you have to think at the time when she was in that hospital, it must have been, I mean, off the charts, literally. Well, it makes you wonder if there was that much in her system six weeks after her death, how much was in it at the moment of her death, of yes, course. Yes, yes. Despite the elevated amounts of these substances, apparently the coroner's office said that the levels of these chemicals were still too low to know if if they were the cause of death. Okay, yeah. so so find out what the cause of death was. In fact, much to the family's outrage, on April 12th, 1994, the county officials announced that the cause of death was due to kidney failure brought on by late-stage cervical cancer. Gloria had been diagnosed just six weeks before she passed. Right. But what would have explained this toxic, like, that still doesn't... What explains yes. 23 fucking people? 
people exactly. getting sick and five having to be hospitalized. Like even if, like you're saying, exactly. If that was the case, then what was also going on in her blood? Right. What was the smell that was going on? And like you said, what's the deal? Right. With the rest of the fucking people that get sick. Right. It's like that doesn't actually explain anything. It could explain her cause of death, maybe, but it's it's kind right. of just sounds like a guess because I would think that if it was kidney failure, they would have found that the first autopsy. Absolutely. Like, I don't know why that would be so, you know, I don't know right. how to do that, but I don't know. I don't know, guys. I just, I just don't know. So a little more about this dimethyl sulfone stuff. Well, the county officials, they had a theory of what happened. According to my sources, dimethyl sulfone, it's been in the past misguidedly self-prescribed for pain treatment. Oh. The source says it can be easily purchased, for example, at like hardware stores. <gasps> It, oh. It's typically used as a degreaser. If it's spread on the skin, it would leave a slick, oily substance that would faintly smell of garlic. No way. Much like they said was on Gloria's skin, this oily sheen and the faint huh. smell of garlic. They theorized that perhaps there was some sort of little understood chemical reaction that happened with the dimethyl sulfone and something else Gloria might have had in her system. They, they thought mm. that maybe when they defibrillated her with the electric shocks, that the electricity may had turned the dimethyl sulfone into dimethyl sulfate, which oh. is a toxic carcinogen. Oh, wow. And it was likely released from her blood when they drew it. And when you account for the other substances in her system that may have produced the ammonium smell, this seemed at first hand like a satisfying solution to the mystery. Right. But not for everyone, however, because Gloria's family argued she would never use this shit on herself. Like, yeah. it wasn't like she wasn't using weird like home. Like, no, she wouldn't be doing that. She yeah. wouldn't have been smearing like, I don't know, bike chain lubricant or whatever <laughs> right. it is on her body. I right. don't know. It just it, a lot of it does add up. But like you said, not all of it. Right. Well, an investigation turned up that there was no dimethyl sulfone on any of Gloria's belongings. Okay. So it's very possible she hadn't been using using it like they said. Even if that explained what happened to Gloria, let's say that like some weird shit happened. 23 people fell ill, five were bad enough to be hospitalized. Yes. Gloria's family refused to accept these results. So right before her burial, they paid to have a third independent autopsy mm. conducted. Mm -hmm. But here's where things go from just weird to scary. The third autopsy was done by Dracula. The third autopsy was essentially useless as Gloria had now been gone for nearly two months. Oh no. And her body had undergone considerable decomposition. Oh no. But here's the thing. This was apparently because the refrigeration unit in which the county stored Gloria's body, apparently it was faulty. Mm -mm. So Gloria's body was not properly preserved. Nope. What a mishap. Nope. On top of that, now buckle down for this. It was discovered that Gloria's heart had been removed <gasps> from her body. Oh my that god. That sounds like a goddamn cover up. That sounds like a goddamn cover up. That sounds like fucking Mercy Brown. Wow. Okay, no, this is a cover up. I'm certain of it now. There's no fucking way that this body, the most important body that this county could have, could be just accidentally put into a yeah. fridge, a refrigerator that wasn't really working properly. Um, no, they would be working their fucking asses off to make sure that everything was kept in order. Oh, the sources also say that no reasons could be determined as to why the heart was removed and it yes. was never returned to the coroner's office. I'm guessing they don't know where that heart went. Oh, yeah. yeah. How fucking insane is that's that? That's disgusting. How fucking insane is that? That is so disgusting, and that's full of a cover-up. It makes me think, like, did they put this, like, shit on her while, while she was there, or did a doctor maybe have her ingest it to make her, like, some fucking mad scientist-ass doctor thinking that that would help her with her pain, with her cancer, or whatever the fuck? Like, right. I mean, something is not right. Like, something is being covered up. Up. Right. Naturally, people began to suspect that this was some kind of a cover-up. Yes. Uh, perhaps, you know, the county was trying to cover for this fucking hospital that had mm -hmm. been cited for violations before. And the theories as to what was actually being covered up obviously is debated, too. And these run the gamut. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, why was the staff having these reactions? California's Department of Health was called in to investigate. And two scientists were assigned to the case as well. A doctors Ana Maria Osorio and Dr. Kristen Waller. They were unable to find any cause, of course, of the ailment plaguing the hospital mm -hmm. and, and the hospital staff, mm -hmm. and they determined that this was a case of mass hysteria. 
But how did someone go into the ICU for two weeks right. with mass hysteria? That's that's the other thing. That seems more... I mean, I know mass hysteria is a real thing. And it's like, not only is it a real thing, it can actually give you physical, real symptoms. But like, that seems like on another level. Right. And, and think about this. And obviously, it says the hospital staff were totally against this notion that this yes, was mass hysteria. Yes, they're like, no. So think about it. Let's say it was a cover-up. You've got a lot of your staff saying this was real. So it's uh, like, if it is a lot of a cover-up, most of the staff aren't part of it. No, it would definitely got to be a cover-up involving more higher-ups. You would think someone in that staff would talk if they knew like, all there was improperly, uh, you know, if there was chemicals or whatever that were not stored properly. Shit, like, I I, I don't know. It's just so weird. Yeah, well, that's what makes me think that maybe it's like someone did something wrong with her previously, like earlier in the day or, or something like that. So the doctors that engaged with her near her time of death didn't know what had happened before so they don't even know what the deal is and what is being covered up and who was involved and things like that like I think it has to do with much higher up yeah. like much more higher up people like if it's the heads of the hospital or maybe researchers or independent companies trying to come up with ways to you know I don't know but right. it, it seems like it's definitely a higher up situation it's not just your everyday people that work at the hospital right. are involved well Let's discuss this notion of mass hysteria. Yes. Because this has been around since, you know, the birth of humankind, essentially. Yeah, we talked about it briefly in our Salem Witch Trials episode. Yes. Now, throughout history, there have been all sorts of mass hysterias for all sorts of different things. Yeah. Whether it was witches or Mm -hmm. you see a lot of uh, demonic possessions, all sorts of stuff. Oftentimes in the history books, you hear about demonic possessions, especially in the medieval era. Yes. Uh, You know, a big example, like you said, Salem Witch Trials. Throughout the medieval period, there are several instances of what is known as the dancing plague. Yes, I have heard of this. Weird stuff. And I'm not going to go too far into these because some of these are going to be subjects for later episodes. Yeah. We're graves graves by these. People would, as it sounds, would begin to just wildly dance in the street without stopping. They'd be laughing, shouting, dancing. And by the end of it, sometimes the whole town would be involved in yeah. this dance, flash dance. And people would <laughs> literally dance until they dropped from exhaustion. Many even died. Yeah. They danced till they goddamn died. Yes, it sounds fun, but then it got, as most things do, it, they went too far. I mean, damn. That's wild. But a lot of these, you know, like I said, don't want to go into because, you know, we're going to save those for later episodes. Like the Devils of Loudoun is a famous one. Very famous stuff. And by the way, these things being, quote unquote, examples of mass hysteria, that's just one theory. Right. right. We're not saying that what happened here was or that any of those past events. I'm sure there have been plenty of mass hysteria events. And there's probably been things that have been called mass hysteria that were actually legit. Yeah. We're not trying to paint with that with that ship. Mm -hmm. Now, mass hysteria is have also been sparked for non-supernatural reasons. Mm. A strange case happened in the United States in 1962 at a textile factory. Employees began to report being bitten by a a bug. (gasps) And it must have been small. They could never get a look at it. But after getting bitten, they would experience these intense flu-like symptoms that included like vomiting and numbness and dizziness. Uh. They believed that this bug had recently arrived in a shipment of fabric. Right. In all, 62 employees at the factory fell ill. 59 of which were women. Huh. So the U.S. Health, or at least a branch of the U.S. Health Department, one that focused on communicable diseases and whatnot, they were brought in to do a thorough investigation, but they could find no cause for this mysterious illness. It was determined that the incident was actually mass hysteria. Mm. Another event happened on October 7th, 1965, at a girls' school in the town of Blackburn, England. That morning, a few girls reported feeling dizzy and strange, and by midday, 85 students were hospitalized with reports of dizziness, chattering teeth, rapid, (gasps) sporadic breathing, but no explanation could be found. Weird. Very weird. Now, just because no evidence is found Mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's just hysteria, as we know. Right. Things can be missed. Things can be misunderstood, you know. In 1994, in a school in London, England, 50 kids suddenly fell ill with abdominal pain. They were all rushed to the hospital, but within six hours, their symptoms were gone. 
Well, at first, people thought this was a case of mass hysteria. Mm -hmm. But a thorough investigation discovered that the cucumbers in the school's food supply had been somehow contaminated by a separate, like, toxic chemical. And a researcher wrote this in the Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health, saying, Investigators should be aware of too readily attributing a psychogenic cause to unusual outbreaks of acute illness in school children. I'm so glad yeah. that this motherfucker came forward yeah. and said that because people don't believe kids when they say things. Right. And this case could have been just tossed aside, just saying once again that this was just mass hysteria. Exactly. No, no, no. Lots of things really do happen. And also sometimes, even if it is mass hysteria, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily not real. Like these exactly. Kids, pe- people are still having these symptoms and it's exactly. like painful. And then also too, it makes you think like, even though it's quote unquote not real maybe some people are just so sensitive to the energy of those around them that they can't help but feel the way that someone else is feeling right it's not just like you seeing someone do that and then your brain kind of freaks out and becomes kind of a little bit of a hypochondriac it's like maybe your body is just like having an initial just response exactly and maybe that's why more women were more affected by it in that case right because women are just more social in general and whatever so who know i mean i don't know also there's different theories that sometimes these hysterias are like a virus but maybe it is more of a mind virus mm, and, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. And, and when we say that it sounds like we're saying like it's just in your head and once again yeah it means that but it doesn't mean it's not an actual yes. there's there's theories this could literally be something that ails the body mm-hmm. physically ails the body and then leaves but it's all psychoactively induced yeah doesn't mean it's not real a thing to be dealt with it's these are actually things we, happening exactly and of course, with Gloria Ramirez, there's there's so many theories. There's theories: was she a victim of alien abduction, and or was oh, she I mean... was this some sort of secret government chemical testing? And it's like with those things, who knows? Like Maybe, they, yeah, you know, I don't obviously, know. could why we focus more on the cover up thing is because it's like if it's aliens, what the fuck are you gonna do? Right. But it's like if this is like a shitty ass, yeah, then that's like that's fucking bullshit. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Yeah, I mean, let us know what you guys think. This is one where it could be so many different things, but this is a true, real story. I mean, something did happen here. And as we said, at the end of the day, this poor woman lost her life, her family destroyed by it. I mean, think about that. Like, not even getting answers. Like, Not anything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so our family member has died. And you can't even, like, where the fuck, how can you not tell me where her heart is? Yes. How How, can you not tell me where my fucking wife's heart is? Like, if you're (laughs) your husband. I mean, it's like I would literally... Go, I would go berserk. I would kill someone. Like I would for sure kill... Literally, I would kill someone. I would lose my fucking mind. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's like, I wonder what their answer was. It was like, so where the fuck is it? Did you lose right. it? Did right. you just throw it away? Right. I mean, like, what did you do? And such like a loaded organ, too. Right. It's not like it was like, oh, they took my gallbladder. Like, what the right. fuck? And like, even if it was... That's fucked up, too. Cervical... And even if it was the kidney failure, like, what the fuck happened to yes. everyone around her? Bizarre. And it's like, yeah, why the fuck... I think this is a cover-up. I mean, for sure, they're covering some shit up. I think that there was some foul play either with some chemical that got accidentally released yeah. or it was someone giving her some terrible fucking medicine for her cancer. Right. And like I said, the family said that she never used that ointment shit, the wheel, the, like the grease, yeah. the, gre- the like literally it's used to like grease machines and shit yeah. or like your bicycle or some shit. I think that's what it's literally yeah. like. It's a. I don't think that was really a priority for her. Right. And I know people do self-medicate and they take silly shit. You hear about it all the time, but her family family is arguing like no like we're around her all the time right and also it wasn't any on her belongings if right, she was regularly right. like Vicks vapor rub if you're oh it gets fucking everywhere and it, you can smell like if you were regularly slathering that shit on yourself oh, it, yeah. you would smell it on your clothes and stuff. they couldn't find it yeah, no. on any of her other belongings it's not right it's not right and here's Ugh. the thing we're not blaming the nurses or even oh, the no, doctors no, I don't, they weren't well, who in knows how, no. right they there's were anyone not that's listening to this that happened to be there that night we're not trying I don't to, think you were involved at all the thing about the heart I would oh want my to kill God. someone. I would want to strangle someone. Because it's so clearly not just something that happened. It's not like they just took a hair sample or right. whatever. It's like, no, you clearly did this on purpose and this was for some kind of reason. Right. And now you're lying about it. Right. It's just so sick. Yeah. It's so sick. Well, let us know what you guys think. Email us at creepstreetpodcast at gmail.com. Let us know on any of our social media or you feel free to chat about it with us and the other citizens of the Milky Way on our citizens of the Milky Way page. 
page Absolutely. on Facebook. Dylan, thank you so much for doing this great research for such oh. a weird, bizarre story. A weird, tragic story. And kind of like, it obviously fits here in Creep Street. This ticks so many boxes. Is it a conspiracy? Is it true crime? I mean, what is this? Like, yeah. it, you at the end of the day, her family deserved much better. She deserved much better. Oh but God. her family, yeah. she wasn't given the dignity in passing that people deserve. No. And so our hearts go out to the Ramirez family. But, yes. uh, wow, I guess that's going to wrap it up for the night of the toxic woman. That's right, Dylan. Thank you for doing that. Now, for a little bit of a palate cleanser, I would appreciate it if you could list off the most illustrious and firm names right. that are our top tier Patreon donors. Every night of the week, every week of the night, of course, the best for last, ladies and gentlemen, the dream James Watkins, the Finnish face via Alungfist, the madman Marcus Hall, the vivacious Vicky McHugh, the tenacious Teresa Hackworth, the heartbreak kid Chris Hackworth, the oh-so-suave Sean Richardson, the British bone-breaker Bex Martin, the notorious Nicholas Barker, the terrifying Taylor Lashmet, the Count of Cool Cameron Corliss, the Archduke of Attitude Adam Archer, the sinister Sam Kiker, the nightmare of New Zealand Noeline Vivilli, the loathsome Johnny Love, and the carnivorous Kevin Bogey. Wow, wow, wow. We love, love, love those names. Thank you, Dylan, for reading them yeah, so of course. well. Uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. Whatever your choice, even if you don't listen on certain ones, go ahead and leave a review on that app anyway, just because it helps everyone out. We just really, really helps everyone appreciate out. it, and it helps it helps spread the word of Creep Street, and the more yeah. that the word of Creep Street is spread, That's right. the more episodes we can make. We want to slip into your algorithms, you know what I mean? Ooh. We want to slip in those algorithms. Those baby. rhythms, baby. Uh, of course, if you want to support this show, if once a week is not enough, go to patreon.com backslash creepstreetpodcast. That's right. Also, we have mentioned before that we have an open enrollment, as it were. No, we uh, we are constantly open for receiving people's personal stories for anything that they have had to do with the Creep Street world, whether that you have seen a ghost, you've had right. a paranormal experience, you, you live in a town that has a close connection with true crime, or anything like that please let us know because we're always collecting those but not only that also wanted to mention that we are also open at all times to receiving your fictional stories yes, your fictional yes. short stories we kind of want to do our own version of creepy pasta basically right some scary spaghetti or something like that as it were so yes we are accepting those at all times so please let us know if you're interested and want to be featured on the podcast you can send yes. those over to creepstreetpodcast at gmail.com yes and also please know creep street is coming to las vegas nevada that's right september 25th for the fear fair at the area 15 convention center it's going to be oh my a God. blast we will be there come and meet us if, if we're you're able so excited excited we're gonna have a blast we would love to meet you also chicago midwestern folks we yes. will be at the chicago days of the dead uh, in november we will be there the whole weekend november 19th through the 21st that's right uh, we'll have a booth there come and meet us say hi there'll be other big guests there people that are almost as notable as us that's right that's right all right well citizens of the milky way my name is dylan hackworth i'm maureen bogey a good night and goodbye thank you for listening